Julius Randle, you know what kind of numbers he puts up? And he didn't have the rebounding numbers last night. He's putting up Charles Barkley numbers. Yeah, Barkley used to give you things like, it used to feel like Barkley would be like 35 points, 20 boards, and 18 something or others. Who the hell knows? He used to stuff that stat box. Uh, okay, it's not like Julius Randle had a million rebounds last night, but he shot better than Bradley Beal. Listen to this. This season, Julius Randle has shot 208 times from three, made 89. Bradley Beal, 255 times, so he shoots it more often, made 85. That's no joke. Randall outplayed um, Beal, who had only 22 points, had a bad game. He was a minus 20. That was the worst in the game. New York played, listen, the Knicks play good defense. Westbrook was 3 of 14. Randall was 7 of 10 from deep. 7 of 10. Of course, it's all those lefty moves. If, if Julius Randle ever gets a right hand for real, it's going to be a problem. Dude's giving you 37 points. You see the numbers there on ESPN Plus, 37 and 6. Randle is a guy, listen, all the, and, and I'm, I brought up Lonzo Ball earlier. Randle was drafted seventh by the Lakers. Lonzo Ball second. Lonzo, but basically the Lakers, forget about just Kentucky guys. They need the, the old, uh, you know, lottery Lakers draft picks for the Knicks. Trade deadline tomorrow. I'm going to ask you again, should the Knicks make a move? Let me give you a hint. The answer rhymes with yes. I want you to listen to Adrian Wojnarowski on uh, a potential trade or, or the potential movement of Lonzo Ball at the trade deadline. Lonzo Ball did not reach agreement with New Orleans on uh, his rookie contract extension before the season. He'd be a restricted free agent um, after the year. And, you know, I think there's a sense on both sides that uh, a new home would make sense for him. Uh, Chicago's a team to watch here. They need a point guard. Um, they have, uh, I, I, I think, for uh, Ball's side, you know, it's a place with some young talent, Zach Levine. Uh, you know, a, a group in Chicago under Billy Donovan that you've seen grow this year in his first season as coach. Um, you know, Philadelphia, I know, has reached out. They've been in the market uh, for a point guard. I think Philly's uh, more of a long shot for Lonzo Ball. Uh, but I do think um, that you know, there's a pretty good chance he moves before Thursday's trade deadline there have again you know ben talks with the bulls uh that's certainly going to be one to watch okay lonzo wants like 20 million dollars a year in this nba he's probably worth it like i gotta say the issue with lonzo i hear it from Stephen a all the time he's not aggressive enough i don't know i think lonzo can lead a fast break lonzo can get you easy buckets because he's always looking for his teammates the ball doesn't stick with him he plays perimeter defense. He plays defense, period. He rebounds the ball. He's a great passer, great court vision. He reminds me, I think I said this yesterday, of, of a version of Mark Jackson. I'm trying to remember who it was um, on first take yesterday who compared him to uh, Jason Kidd. But, like, those guys, what, however their talents are pitched, and however, obviously, Jason Kidd's the best of that bunch, but... Those are like big, strong point guards with great court vision and not the same kind of fast twitchies maybe as some other guys in the league and not, not in Jason Kidd. And, and all of them came into the league with shooting issues, especially Ace and Kidd, right? No J. By the time he won in Dallas, he could shoot. Lonzo was that style in that, you know, like Mark Jackson, Teams that had Mark Jackson, I remember as a Knicks fan back in the day as a rookie, he was great. But teams who had Mark Jackson used to um, look to upgrade. It was like, yeah, he's good, but you would focus on the things he couldn't do. The guy wound up with one of the all-time assist leaders instead of what he could do. 
And I, I feel like sometimes people do that with Lonzo nowadays. But he doesn't have the fast twitchies or the hops of some of the other guys. Lonzo's athletic enough. No, he's not the Aaron Fox fast and all that stuff. But what, again, I said, what team does Lonzo not fit on? Like, when, this is the reason I wanted, I, I thought the Knicks should have drafted Halliburton instead of Obi Toppin. Because he was the kind of guy coming out, Halliburton, could play defense, good big combo guard in the backcourt, could shoot from the outside, you know, just would fit on any team, like would be good in any backcourt. Lonzo, the only thing he was really missing was the outside shot. Every year it's gotten better. And same from the free throw line, which is really a better indicator of future performance than anything else in terms of shooting. No, I don't see where Lonzo doesn't fit but particularly on the Knicks, where he could grow with that team, you know, grow with quickly and Julius Randle and all those guys um, and be a real floor general. He is, the Knicks have some draft capital. They have some cap maneuverability. To me, Lonzo makes a lot of sense. 